The Norwegian campaign behind Japan's love of salmon sushi. Look at the menu of any sushi shop in Japan and you will almost certainly see salmon. Fatty, tender, and bright orange. And for good reason. In a 2017 survey by the seafood company Maruha Nichiro, the fish was found to be the most popular topping for the sixth year in a row ranked far higher than the more traditional tuna and halibut. But salmon is a relatively new addition to the sushi menu, making its rise to the popularity remarkably. A story that is both an allegory of shifting taste trends across Japanese demographics and the opening of one of Japan's most iconic cuisine, sushi, to the world. So swift has been Salmon's success that there is a stark general, generational divide when it comes to which topping is preferred. Is preferred. Many older Japanese start with lean white fish and work their way up to tuna, while younger generations prefer salmon. 20 years ago was when everything changed, says Hideki Ko. Ike, the head chef at Masukomi Sushi Bar in Yurakucho, Tokyo. There are still some restaurants without salmon, he says, but the demand is too great. You just have to serve it. Behind salmon's rise to popularity is the lesser known story of a carefully executed Norwegian marketing campaign, Project Japan. We set out to inject Norwegian salmon into Japanese sushi, says Bjorn Erik Olsen, who in the late 1980s was responsible for market research for Project Japan. He is now the general director of the Cultural Business Development Foundation based in Tromsø, Norway. In the 1970s, Norway began commercial salmon farming, but with decreasing seafood consumption at home, salmon was soon filling industrial freezers across the country. By the late 1980s, Norway was in a desperate need of a new market for its fish. Japan, meanwhile, had been overfishing its waters to meet high consumption, and with Japanese fishermen told to remain within their exclusive economic zones, by the United Nations, Japan became, began opening up its once nearly self-sufficient seafood industry to foreign suppliers. The country stood out as an ideal market for Norwegian salmon. When Olsen landed in Tokyo in 1986, he took one look at Japanese seafood consumption habits and he knew his target market. We had a target we had to target the raw consumption market, he says. Fish in Japan aimed for the grilled market was cheap and plenty food. But fish meant for sushi or sashimi could be priced up to 10 times higher. This was no easy task, however, and breaking into the raw fish market proved far more formidable than anticipated. When Olsen introduced Norwegian salmon to representatives from the Japanese seafood industry, he says it was met with a uniform response. We don't eat salmon in Japan. Raw salmon, that is. Japanese have eaten salmon for hundreds of years, but locally caught Pacific salmon contains parasites and must be cooked or cured for its lean meat to be edible. Farmed Atlantic salmon, on the other hand, is fatty and parasitic free. But the image of salmon as a cheap fish unsuitable for raw consumption was not easy to overcome. We couldn't just say that our fish doesn't have parasites, Olsen says. And parasites or not, Japan just wasn't clearly ready for raw salmon. The complaints from chefs and seafood representatives included just about everything. They'd say the meat had the wrong color, Olsen says. The smell had a river-like quality to it that was unsuitable for sushi. Or the taste wasn't right. Or the head was in a wrong shape people told Olsen. Yet raw salmon had been considered a delicacy at the Norwegian embassy in Tokyo for years. 
Japanese visitors to the embassy seemed to enjoy it. The problem was not with the fish, Olsen concluded, but with people's conception of salmon. And so Olsen set out to dif differentiate Atlantic salmon from Pacific salmon, starting with the name. The Japanese word for salmon is sake, like the alcohol, but with less stress on the first syllable, sake. Olsen instead turned to English and decided to use the katakana, salmon, the new name now used in virtually every Japanese sushi restaurant. Still, a name change and advertisements depicting clear Arctic waters was not enough to convince skeptics in Japan, and at home, pressure was mounting. As Norwegian consumers turned to red meat and poultry, the Norwegian seafood industry itself found itself on the brink of collapse, says Olsen. There was a lot of pressure to give up, he says. Many in the salmon farming industry pushed for him to let his sushi ambition go and sell the fish to cheaper grilled market, where buyers were lining up. Olsen resisted, and in 1992, he got lucky. A company he had been dealing with for years, Nichire, took him up on an offer to buy 5,000 metric tons of salmon for next to nothing. The only condition was that it could be only sold as sushi. If we could just get people to try it, Olsen says, I knew it would be a success. With raw salmon now on the market for consumption, the ball began rolling. In the 1990s, a Japanese cooking show, Iron Chef, and enterprising celebrity chefs like Yutaka Ishinabe began endorsing Norwegian salmon on national television. With its dewy, smooth texture and tasty fat, salmon began to catch on and people began to demand the Atlantic fish in restaurants across the country. The demand became so extreme that in Norway, the industry suddenly had to play catch up. It took 10 years for the Japanese market to take off, but 20 years before the industry understood what was happening. The industry wanted one standardized product that could be sold in Japan as easily as it could be in Denmark. Raw salmon was seen as a curiosity, he says. No one was going to put extra resources into the Japanese rocket market. It was not until 2007 that Norway's Leroy, the second largest salmon and trout farming company in the world, soft launched a product aimed sp specifically at the Japanese consumer, Aurora Salomon. For raw salmon, you want to have extra high fat content, says Keita Ko. Ido, Koido, the president of Leroy Japan. Looking to maximize the salmon's fattiness, Leroy looked north of the Arctic surf Circle. That far north, there's clean, cold water and a stable temperature throughout the year. The cold weather makes the fish grow more slowly and brings more fat into the meat. For fish that is farmed halfway across the world, the most important thing for a Japanese consumer is freshness, he says. Every week, Leroy, with a market share of upwards of 20% sends three full flights of Norwegian salmon to various airports across the country. Meanwhile, Olsen reflects back on the moment he realized his marketing campaign had been a success. The moment I knew salmon sushi had caught on, Olsen says, was when I, was, when I went to Tokyo and suddenly saw plas small plastic salmon sushi shops in the windows. So, which kind of sushi do you enjoy? Do you like the traditional tuna sushi or do you prefer salmon sushi? Which is your preference? Which do you like? For me, I prefer to eat the half grilled salmon with mayonnaise. That for me is really delicious. It's warm and it's just so soft and it just melts in your mouth. Let me know in the comment section which you prefer. What kind of sushi do you like to eat? All right. Well, I hope you all have a uh, enjoy your next sushi meal. Have a good one. Matane. Bye bye.